Welcome to Advanced Masking with Dr. Brown himself, as you can see here on the screen. I don't know who this character is, but he's awfully good looking. In this tutorial, of course, a tutorial done in Photoshop CS5, I thought I would approach Advanced Masking. OK, Russ, we've seen your other demos where you've done really easy things with simple backgrounds. I thought I would do a really complex background and really give these new masking tools a test. Now, I could fail. So be prepared. Let's see what happens. Because if we take a look at this, an average advanced masking user would start by looking at the red, green, and blue channels, and they might give up. There may be hope in the blue channel for pulling off a mask, but it might take a few days. Let's really give the new masking features in Photoshop a test. And all I'm going to use in this project is the Quick Select tool combined with the new masking capabilities. Now, I'm going to just show you some Quick Select tool selections I've made just to show you the different variations you can get with the Quick Select tool and using some of the other selection tools because I want to show you some experiments I did since this is advanced. Now, here's the normal selection I made with a Quick Select tool. And if you remember my theory in life, less is more. So I'm choosing to let Photoshop do all the work in the areas of transition so that when I turn this on, you can see I've left these areas of transition unselected. Now, I tried that and got great results. Then I tried extending it a little bit farther to see if I could then paint in more areas. I didn't get the results I was thinking I would get. I worked too hard. I found that the harder you work at trying to define this mask, I got worse results. So work less, get more. Here's another version that I went too far. And then I really did a crazy test. Check this one out. I, could I have helmet head? I even got excellent results by simply doing a selection around the hair in this just irregular shape around the hair where I didn't define it very well. But I did find my best results, however, came from this version right here, this version which was just done with the simple Quick Select tool. So it all comes back to less is more, don't work too hard. The harder you work at trying to find the hair, the worse it got. So I made the Quick Selection, as you can see here. But check this out. I really didn't like the rough edge I got around my hand here. But I'm going to force myself to use the Quick Select tool and not go in and use the pen tool and draw around this because I want to see, really give this a test to see how it's going to work. So let's zoom back out. Let's go ahead and load in this quick selection that I made earlier, go back to my original, and go back to my layers. Okay, I just wanted to divert off for a moment just to show you that experiments I did with selections since this is an advanced course and you need to know. So here's my selection that I made with quick select. A little bit rough and not refined. I didn't work hard at it. Step number two, let's go right over here and create a mask. Bringing up my mask panel just like this, and I'm going to click right here on this button to create the mask. Bingo. I can reveal my background. Of course, the circus background. What could be more fitting for the crazy Dr. Brown than a circus of crazies? Um, so let's try and blend this into this background. Step number one, advanced users. I'm going to start by getting the refined edge around the hands to look better. I'm not going to worry about the hair because this is an advanced course. So this is my two-step approach for advanced users. Mask edge. We're going to first get the edge to look right for the hard edges. Now we could go in with smart radius and radius controls, but you can find if you do the smart edge with radius controls and you bring this up, do you see all the noise coming in around the hand? It's just not the quality I was looking for. So let's drop that back down and drop these settings back down to this level right here. The trick is we want to go in and use some of the adjust edge controls. I want to go in and feather the edge slightly. I want to go in and shift the edge. And you see how I'm making the edge clean up right along there? 
it's now, I've blurred it with a little bit of feathering, and I'm shrinking that what was a rough edge, and I'm shrinking it in on the contours of the hand. I can also go in and do a little smoothing and contrast adjustment. What I'm doing is I'm taking a rough edge, blurring it, adjusting contrast, and adjusting the shift of the edge. What does shift do? You can shift out or shift in, and you just shift it to the point. So step number one, I'm cleaning up the edges, the hard edges. And I'm not even concerned about the hair. Let's do a little bit more feathering and a little bit more stretch there and a little bit con of contrast. Perfect. That is really, really nice. It's got a nice edge around it. I now click OK because I'm done processing this mask. And if we go ahead and take a look at this mask, let's hide that selection I just made. You can see what I've done now is I've refined that edge a little bit sharper before it was a little bit too loose. Okay, so now let's go back to our original image. We're now ready for step number two. Let's zoom back out. We got the hand and the jacket to look great. We're now concerned with the hair. We go back in for a second pass on the masking. I target the mask, I go back into mask edge. So you got that straight, pass number one, refine sharp edges. Pass number two, let's refine the hair. Now the hair, we can go in and adjust the radius a bit, and we can go into the automatic mode, but I think we're really going to do this. Professionals are going to use this brush right here to refine the radius um, with this brush. What I'm going to do is just go right in here and paint on the hair. I can switch back and forth to my different modes. Of course, the L mode, which we're in now, the K shows us the mask. And let's take a look and see what this looks like against white with the W key or black with the B key. And let's go back to the white mode and let's just see what this looks like. Now, check it out. I'm painting with areas of transition. So I want to go in and define areas of transition. I do not want to go too far into my defined mask. Notice I'm just hovering here along the edge like this. There are a few more hairs there. Let's get all the hairs as we move up here. I'm not so worried how far I go into this. Now let's go down here and grab all that hair, and then we're going to wait for it to process. Step back, and it does the calculating for you. It calculates the edges based upon your areas of transition. Show radius. So you can see these are the areas. I clicked on this button right here to show the areas of transition. Let's turn that back off. I can go in and rework areas and add more to this area, or I may find that I need to subtract areas. Let's now put this up against the original image. That was the L key to display it against our background. Looking pretty good. Notice there's a little bit of stray noise. This is not an easy project because there was so much information happening behind that. If we go back to our original, in fact, we can show our original right here. Let's click here and reveal the layer. So look at all the, the noise going on back in here and really tough definition back in here. Let's go back to our composite here. So now, Here's a great tool. You can either go over here and select the eraser tool here, or you can use the Option or Alt key. I like to use the Option or Alt, and I'm using the close bracket to bring this down in size right now, bring this down in size, so I can finesse the mask. It's not the mask, it's the area that's being calculated for transition. Yes, keep that in mind, I am readjusting the area of transition. I'm holding down the Option key or the Alt key, and notice I'm getting rid of areas that I do not want in the transition, these fuzzy areas around the edges of the hair. Did I say this was a complex project? Yes, it was. Did I would say that this would be almost impossible without Photoshop CS5? Yes, it would be. Um, 
the complexity that one would have to go through, you'd have to use multiple tools to make this happen. You'd have to work on the mask. You'd have to use dodge and burn tools. But that's looking pretty darn good as it's blending in. And I haven't even given this the final, final touch. Wait, wait. I'm going to add that section right there. Yes. So areas of transition, let's look at the original. Here's my original. And these are my areas of transition. And it's magically growing the hair. Let's finish this all off. We learned about adjusting this with two passes, adjusting um, our shift here. Decontaminate colors is my final step in any project like this. Let's turn that on and then let's adjust it. Now I'm going to move this all the way over to the right and watch how it grows the fine detail into the hair all the way to the left and a little less. I do find sometimes with fine light hair that you want to watch this. If you go too far, it does lose some of the detail in the fine edges. Whereas you have a little bit more, I think it's a nice compromise here of decontaminating de the colors as they move out into the image, but pretty darn good, pretty darn good for an advanced project like this. A little decontamination, shifting the edge. Oh, we didn't do that. Let's shift the edge a little. Wow. Check that out. I'm shifting the edge. There's a point at which a little bit of noise comes into play, but really, really great results from a really complex situation, and we're letting Photoshop CS5 do most of the work. Let's just click OK. It's going to automatically create a new layer. Check it out up here. So it has the new layer. Great feature. I love leaving the original alone, and every professional does. There it is, the wild, the crazy, <laughs> the maniac Dr. Brown here using Adobe Photoshop CS5's advanced masking features. Give it a try.